Hello, and welcome to the Healthy Families podcast brought to you by Healthy Food Guide. I'm Jess Burvel. And I'm Kathleen Alum, and we're your hosts. Now, this weekly podcast is your go to source for credible health and nutrition advice from qualified experts to help you and your family thrive. Whether you're planning a baby or wondering what to feed your kids or looking to live longer, we've got all the practical tips for every stage of life to guide you and your loved ones. And we're kicking off our very first episode today with a question we get asked all the time, which is whether it's okay to skip breakfast. Jess, for years we've been told that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. I know. And skipping it right has been linked to all sorts of health issues such as being overweight or developing conditions like heart disease or even type 2 diabetes. So Jess, what are some of the reasons why people might skip this meal? Look, there's a few reasons that come to mind and one that I'm seeing a lot of at the moment is the impact of intermittent fasting and in particular time-restricted eating, which often means people are not having breakfast. Now we're going to delve into that in a little bit more detail later on in the podcast. What about lack of time? You know those crazy mornings oh God, where you have to be <laughs> out the door early or the kids have to be at school, sports, extracurricular, you name it, just no time. No time. There is never enough time in the morning, is there? And look, another reason might be that someone just doesn't want to eat breakfast. They don't feel hungry in the morning. They don't like eating food and they they just want to start eating a bit later on in the day. Mm. Why don't we start then by looking at some of the benefits of eating breakfast? So an important one that breakfast does provide us with energy to fuel our day. That's that's right. I mean, we store glycogen to be used for energy. And what happens overnight while we're sleeping is that our body uses up a lot of that glycogen we've got stored in reserve. And so by having breakfast in the morning, we're topping up uh, those energy reserves and giving us the fuel we need you know, to, to go ahead with our day. Mm, that's especially important for children and any any child or teenager, whether it be at school, because we know that eating breakfast helps to improve concentration and memory and how's our brain needs the glucose to function, right? Yeah, look, it's amazing. Our, our brain actually uses up a huge proportion of our energy every day. And if you're someone who likes to exercise in the morning, something to consider is that skipping breakfast can impact both your performance and your recovery, especially if you're doing something high impact or longer in duration, like a really long run. So eating something before your training or your exercise session gives you the energy to to make sure you can last all the way through the session without getting tired. And then having something to eat after your session helps to replace that lost glycogen and to help start to repair your muscles, which you know minimizes the chances that you're going to pull up sore or feeling really tired the next day. Even for children too, if they've got an early morning start or training session before school, I think eating breakfast is paramount, right? Oh, really, really important. And, you know, you could also end up having a bit of an energy slump in the afternoon if you're not replacing that, you know, that energy straight away after you've eat, after you've exercised. Okay, so breakfast gives us some, some energy. We know that. So what about some important nutrients that we may be missing if we do skip this meal? Yeah, look, a key one is fibre. Um, and we know that we can get a really good source from our whole grain breakfast cereals and, and breads and fiber is just so important for things like gut health, heart health, um, and keeping our blood sugar levels stable throughout the day. And let's not forget calcium too from dairy foods like milks and yogurts, which, in a, which is such an essential mineral, particularly for our bones and our teeth, keeping them strong and healthy. So just are there any stages in life where this particular mineral such as calcium is really important? Yeah, look, calcium is important for everyone, but how much you need does change a little bit throughout life. And during those growth spurt years, you know, teenagers in particular need need extra calcium to support their growing bodies and those growing bones. Now, most of us reach our peak bone mass, which is that point when our bones are at their strongest by the time we reach our early 20s. And so getting enough calcium during those teenage years is, is really important to make sure our bones are as strong as possible to set us up for the future. And then again, as we start to get older, what happens is we start to lose calcium from our bones, Mm -hmm. uh, meaning they can become more brittle and prone to fractures, you know, for example, if we were to have a a fall. And for women, this starts a bit earlier, um, usually around the age of menopause, so sort of around the age of 50. And in men, it's a little bit later on in life, around the age of, say, 70. So those two groups, the teenagers and the the older adults, do need a little little bit more calcium than other age groups. Mm, So it's so important. Iron, which is another mineral, and, you know, we we can get that quite quite a lot of it at breakfast time as well. So Jess, why do we need iron? You don't often think of iron 
been consumed for breakfast, right? That's right, because iron's actually found more commonly in red meat, and we don't tend to eat red meat at breakfast. Some people may. <laughs> <I'm not laughs> Some sure. people might. But that's not, no judgment there. <laughs> okay, so iron. Our red blood cells need iron to produce something called haemoglobin. Now, haemoglobin is what helps to carry oxygen around our body. And so when you don't get enough iron in your diet, you can end up feeling really tired because you're not getting enough oxygen to your muscles and to your brain, etc. And iron deficiency is actually more common than you would think. Um, Around one in eight people in Australia are actually not getting enough iron. And there's a few groups of people in particular who are more susceptible, and they include pregnant women, breastfeeding women, and teenage girls. And all those groups have sort of higher requirements than potentially other people do. Um, and also another group is people who are following vegan or plant-based diets, because as we just mentioned, the most common source of iron is is from red meat. And so when you're not including that in your diet, you need to look to other sources um, uh, for iron, which can come from some of the breakfast cereals and breads. Hmm. And what about for the mums out there? A baby's iron store starts to run quite low, doesn't it, at the age of six Mm, months? So it's important to introduce those iron-rich foods, especially when they're starting on solids into their diet. That You may not know this, but breakfast cereals and breads, like Jess said, they are actually sources of iron, even though they're plant-based. Many of them are fortified with iron. So um, including cereal, whole grain cereals in your diet, whole grain breads, helps you meet your iron requirements. Yeah, no, that's right. I think a lot of people are probably not aware of that. So you can always look on the on the labels on the back of the pack to check whether your breakfast cereal or your bread's got you know got some iron in it okay moving on from nutrients what about weight loss Jess because some of the reasons why people skip breakfast is to lose weight does that actually work great question Kathleen I mean in theory that makes sense doesn't it if you skip breakfast you're essentially cutting a meal out of your day which means that you're eating less kilojoules overall which should result in in weight loss and for some people that can work However, something I see quite a lot of is that um, when someone skips breakfast, it can leave them feeling really hungry. So by the time lunch rolls around, they end up eating more than they would have eaten if they had eaten breakfast in the first place. And that essentially wipes out the effect of um, of skipping breakfast in the first place. Mm, I know, speaking from my experience, I know if my kids aren't eating breakfast and we are busy people in the morning, they are either looking for something really quick and it's a quick fix and oftentimes I'll just say, no, you can't have that, but I have to be prepared. I have to have backups. But, yeah, eating breakfast is a must, must, must in our family. I know. I'm going crazy hungry if I don't eat breakfast by about 10.30 as well. And if we look at what the research says about the impact of skipping breakfast, the findings are, are really mixed. We've got some studies that tell us that um, you know children and teenagers in particular who skip breakfast are more likely to be overweight or obese than those who do eat breakfast. But when it comes to adults, at this stage, look, we just don't have enough good quality research to show that people who skip breakfast lose any more weight than people who do eat breakfast. All right, we'll put those research links in the show notes. Maybe we should look at some of the things now, that what to look for in a healthy breakfast. Now, we mentioned whole grains. So whole grains are rich in fiber, which improves our digestion. We talked about gut health and heart health, and also does help to keep our blood sugar levels on an even on an even kill. And this is really important for hunger and appetite regulation. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And then another one, um, another nutrient we're looking for in a nutritionally balanced breakfast is protein. Now, protein might not be the first thing that comes to mind when you think of breakfast. But um, protein is really important for, for many things, in particular helping with our muscle repair and muscle growth. And another benefit of including a good source of um, protein at breakfast time is it helps to make that meal more satisfying, which means that you're going to feel full for longer and less likely to you know, want to reach for a snack um, you know, mid-morning. And a, a good way to get more protein into your breakfast is through things like eggs, um, milk, yogurt, and perhaps tofu as well. And then there's some fruit and veggies, and most of us don't eat the recommended amount of fruits and veg, so including some of those in your breakfast is not only a great way to add colour, but to top up the amount you're having each day. Yeah, you can never have too much fruit and veg in your diet. Uh, look, and the last thing we're looking for in a, in a good breakfast is a source of healthy fats. And healthy fats come from things like avocado, nuts and seeds, And that's really important for lots of things like our heart and brain and skin health. And just like we were saying about the protein and fibre, including some healthy fats in your breakfast can, again, help slow down the absorption of the food and keep you feeling full for longer throughout the day. 
At Sanitarium Health Food Company, we're on a mission to make healthy eating easier. From grab-and-go brekkies to clever snack ideas and budget-friendly dinners, our plant-powered recipes have you covered. At sanitarium.com, download our free 12 before 12 cookbook. It's a fun food adventure that teaches kids skills for a healthier life. And whether you're feeding toddlers or fueling teenagers, helpful nutrition advice is just a click away. Sanitarium. Eat well, live well. All right, Jess, so we've mentioned the importance of whole grains. We've mentioned protein. We've mentioned fruits and veg, and we can't forget the healthy fat. So, Jess, can you give us some examples of some healthy breakfast that tick all those boxes? Yeah, look, there's quite a few things. There's something for everybody, no matter what your preference for breakfast is. So the first one would be something like a lovely grainy toast with peanut butter or avocado on top. Or if you're someone who likes a cooked breakfast, you could have some eggs or baked beans on grainy toast with a side of veggies like mushrooms or spinach or tomato. Um, and then for our cereal fans, uh, you could have uh, like a whole grain cereal with some milk, whether it's a cow's milk or plant-based milk, whatever you prefer, and some fresh fruit on top. Uh, also yogurt, you could swap out the milk for yogurt, have some muesli, pop some berries and seeds and nuts on top of that as well. Or if you want to just grab something you can take with you, like you could make a smoothie, chuck in some fruit or some veggies, a bit of milk. You could even top it up with some protein powder as well. All right. So what about you, Kathleen? I mean, you've got three kids to get out the door in the morning. What are some examples of things that you're giving your family? I'm all for fan of grab and go like your smoothies, but we love overnight oats in our family. That's something I can do the night before. It streamlines my morning. I know they're having something decent that we're out the door. I mean, I'm a big fan of whole grain cereals and milks, of course. And on the weekend, I like to kind of lavish out with a bit more savory affairs like eggs and toast and even omelets. And if I'm really, really good, I will bake some muffins and they're freezeable and then they're always a kind of last minute go to as well. So we've covered quite a bit of ground today, Jess. So what's the verdict really? Is breakfast the most important meal of the day? So look, everyone's different, Kathleen. So there's no real right or wrong answer to that question. Um, but for some people, or for some particular groups of people, in particular little kids and, and teenagers, and perhaps those people who are doing that high intensity or longer exercise in the morning, and even people with really active jobs, like if you're a tradie, for example, having a good breakfast in the morning is going to help set you up for the day and give you that energy you need to perform at your best. But I guess what I'm hearing too, if breakfast just doesn't work for you, then that's okay too. It it is, yeah. Yeah, so I guess we just need to be sure to include some of these foods normally eaten at breakfast, like whole grains, we mentioned fruits, vegetables if we can, dairy or dairy alternatives, and other meals so you get those healthy nutrients your body needs like fibre, calcium and iron. That's absolutely right. And look, that's it for today. So thanks for joining us and please do send us your questions. We look forward to you joining us again next time on Healthy Families, brought to you by Healthy Food Guide.